Good morning, everyone. Let us start. Thank you. Remember, we have been learning chapter one, and today uh, we shall discuss about land resources in India. And now I shall share my screen. So here we have land resources in India. Remember, we have been learning chapter one, uh, resources and development. So in this uh, paragraph, in this small paragraph, uh, you'll find how is land a resource to us. Everybody has known the meaning of resources. That uh, anything which can satisfy human want is known as a resource. Now let us learn how is land a resource to us. So we live on land. We perform our economic activities on land and we use it in different ways. Okay, so we live on land, we perform our economic activities, we cultivate on land, we construct our factories, then we construct our institutions on land. That is, we use land in different ways. Thus, land is a resource to us. So that is why, since it uh, satisfies, since land satisfies human wants, land is a natural resource of utmost importance. Okay, it supports vegetation, wildlife, human life, economic activities, transport, and the communication systems. So land supports natural vegetation. Land supports uh, wildlife, different types of animals, then land supports human beings, then we conduct economic activities, different types of economic activities on land. And uh, it is mainly on the land that we uh, say transport and uh, communicate. Okay. And that is why uh, it is said that land is a very important natural resource uh, see here in this figure number 1.3 so this is a pie chart showing uh, distribution of landforms in India and uh, when we look at this pie chart we find that 43% of the total geographical area of India is occupied by plains Okay, see here, see the quote here, plains. Then 30% of total geographical area by mountains. And 27% uh, by a uh, plateau. So these are the three important major landforms of India. Okay. So India it has lain under a variety of uh, relief features, namely mountains, plateaus, plains and islands that you have learned in class 9 also. So India has a diverse landform. India has different types of landforms like mountains, plateaus, plains and islands. And each type of landform has its own usefulness. Okay, so let us see about 43% of uh, lane area is plain as indicated in the pie diagram which provide facilities for agriculture industries 
So usefulness of plane is given here. Planes provide uh, facilities for agriculture and industries. Then mountains account 30% of the total surface area of country and ensure perennial flow of some of the rivers provide facilities for tourism and ecological aspects. So mountains provide us water, then mountains provide us unique beauty, hence develop tourism and other ecological aspects. About 27% of the country is the plateau region and the usefulness of plateau region is given here. It possesses rich reserves of minerals fossil fuels that is petroleum, natural gas, uh, coal and the forest. Okay, so in this way is physiographic landform, is physiographic uh, division uh, has its own usefulness and hence land is a resource to us. Okay, so we can see a map of India also. So this is a physical map of India and uh, see here the brown color areas so this area then uh, this area okay the brown color areas here uh, this area and uh, some areas here also actually it comes under Nepal but here along the Nepal India border we have the Shivaliks also so these areas are occupied by uh, these uh, play uh, mountains okay and where is the green shaded areas here okay see here here this area so this area is uh, is the plains okay plain area the plains here this area and uh, the yellow color areas okay these areas are the uh, plateaus as you have learned in class 9 and here uh, these green shaded areas green colored areas these are the coastal plains okay so in this way we have uh, different uh, landforms in India And the East landform has its own usefulness, as I told you earlier. Uh, up to here, any questions, boys and girls? Okay, if you don't have questions, then let us continue. Next, uh, land utilization. How is land utilized in India? How do we use the land? Okay, land resources are used for the following purposes in India. Number one, forest. Some areas in India are occupied by forest. Then number two, land not available for cultivation. So land not available for cultivation means area occupied by a varain and a wash land and land put to non-agricultural uses. Okay, land put to non agricultural uses, for example, buildings, roads, factories. Land occupied by factories, roads, buildings, and other uh, infrastructures. Okay, remember, land not available for cultivation means area covered by varain and wash land plus. Uh, area occupied by buildings, factories, roads, railways, etc. Okay, barren and wash land means the land which cannot be put into use, like uh, the land which is covered by uh, rock fragments, for example, okay, or by big, big boulders. So, next we have uh, other, the third one, other uncultivated land excluding fellow land here fellow land is not included so under this category of land use we have permanent pastures and a grazing land that is 
uh, permanent pasture means permanent grasslands okay permanent grasslands then number v land under miscellaneous tree crops groups so land occupied by tree crops but orchards okay land occupied by these oranges then apples then other tree crops then number c culturable was land see what do you mean by culturable was land if uh, a land is left uncultivated for more than five agricultural years we call it culturable was land okay if a piece of land is left uncultivated for more than five years is known as culturable was land so the fourth type of hello land is uh, the, the fourth type of land use is fellow lands and here we have two types of fellow land the first one is the current fellow current fellow means land left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year so if you left uh, if you leave your agricultural land without cultivation for less than or one agricultural year we call it current fellow and and we have other type of a fellow land that is a fellow land other than the current fellow here okay so what do you mean by uh, fellow land for simply so land lab uncultivated for the past one to five agricultural years is known as uh, fellow land other than current fellow so let me tell you again if you uh, keep your land without cultivation for more than five years we call it culturable was land then if you keep your land without cultivation for less than one agricultural year or one agricultural year we call it current fellow and if you keep your land without cultivation uh, between one to five agricultural year we call it uh, fellow land other than current fellow okay and the last category of land use in india is the net zone area actually net zone area is the actual area okay uh, is the physical area extent of land which is actually covered by crops the so natural area is the area which is actually covered by crops in a year that is known as uh, natural area another definition of natural area is that the physical extent of land okay which is actually covered by crops is known as natural area and we have another cat uh, say category is also here that is gross crop area what do you mean by gross crop area area sown more than once in an agriculture year plus natural area is known as gross crop area Okay, area sown more than once in an agriculture year plus natural area is known as gross crop area. So let us see an example here. Uh, let us say uh, a family, for example, okay, a family has uh, four hectares of land. For example, this is a plot of land of a family and uh, to explain it properly let us divide it into four sections okay so this family has uh, four hectare of land okay four hectares of land so this is what we call net zone area say so this is the first uh, one so this is uh, hectare another okay this is the third one this is the fourth one that is a uh, four hectares let us say is is uh, section is a hectare okay let us say this is one hectare this is another one hectare 
this is another one hectare and this is another one hectare okay so the family has four hectares of land so here in a particular uh, year in an agricultural year this family has shown a fast crop of paddy okay has shown fast crop of paddy all the four hectares of land so here a uh, first crop of paddy okay first crop of paddy four hectares so the family has grown for these four hectares of land okay uh, paddy first crop of paddy and after harvesting this first crop of paddy again the family okay is uh, sowing the main paddy okay again the fam after harvesting the first crop of paddy okay here uh, the family is growing main paddy another four hectares of land okay another four hectares of land uh, by main paddy main paddy another four hectares of land okay and after harvesting paddy again let us say uh, the family is growing uh, this potato for example another two hectares of land after harvesting the main paddy then the family is growing potato potato another two hectares of land okay and so how many hectares we have got here first crop of paddy four then uh, second crop of paddy four then potato two so four plus two sorry four plus four plus two is equal to uh, ten hectare so this ten hectare is the gross crop area okay this 10 hectare is the gross crop area you must know that the family has only four hectares of land okay the physical extent of land of family of this particular family is four hectares only okay however the family is practicing uh, okay multiple cropping and so the family has grown first crop of paddy four hectares then main paddy another four hectare then potato two hectares uh, so in a year the family is uh, uh, growing 10 hectares of a uh, lane even though the family has only four hectares this is what we call gross crop area see let us read the definition again area sown more than once in an agricultural year plus net shown area is known as the gross crop area okay area sown more than once in an agriculture year plus net shown area is known as the gross crop area okay see here this is the this is the gross crop area and uh, this is the physical extent of land that is the net shown area okay let us say this is the net shown area and this is the area sown more than once so net zone area plus area zone more than once is known as gross crop area. So any question boys and girls? Any question? No sir. Okay then let us continue. Next we have land use pattern in India. The use of land is determined by both physical factors and the human factors. So these are the two important factors affecting the land use in India. So physical factors include topography, climate, soil types. Topography here means landforms. And the human factors include population density, technological capability, culture and the traditions. Okay, so these are the factors affecting the land use in India and now we have figure number 1.4 okay showing the land use patterns in india 140 1960 61 another for 2014-15 okay 
so uh, let us examine these two uh, pie shirts see here the blue color sector that is 4s okay 4s here so let us read in the year 1960 61 4s occupied only 18.11 percent in the okay 1960 61 and uh, it has been increased to area occupied by forest has been increased to 23.3 percent in the year 2014 and 15 so area under forest has been increasing so what could be the reason for this do you know what could be the reason for increasing the area under forest this may be uh, say delineation of uh, more area okay delineation demarcation of more area uh, by the government as a forest or maybe due to the plantation activities conducted by the forest departments and the communities okay so in this way we have another category of land use that is uh, net zone area okay the area which is occupied by actually occupied by crops in a year that is net zone area here uh, in the year 1960-61, natural area uh, occupied 46.26% and it has been decreased to 45.5% in the year 2014-15. So area under a natural area, NSA, has been increasing. So what could be the reason for this? I think you may be seeing the observing, okay, that agricultural lanes are occupying by the uh, houses okay you may be seeing that in the agricultural fields you may be uh, observing that schools are constructed then houses are constructed uh, so that may be the reason for decreasing the natural area okay in india then let us see another one uh, varying and the cultural was land here okay varying and the uncultural Varying and unculturable was land. Uh, see here, I think this is the category here. Varian and unculturable, that is the land which cannot be cultivated, uh, is 18.11% in the year 1960 61, and it has been decreased to 5.5% in the year 2014 and 15. So this may be due to uh, say reclamation of lane, okay? Reclamation of lane, and uh, more uh, this varying in a culture of uncultured was land has been used in other purposes. Sometimes it may be reclaimed and uh, may be used to uh, to some economic activities. So in this way, uh, you may read. Uh, this uh, pie diagram okay you may compare these two pie diagrams and if you have difficulties you can ask me okay then let us continue the total geographical area of India is 3.28 million square kilometer that you have learned the total area of India is 3.28 million square kilometer land use data however is available only 93 percent of the total geographical area so for use India is getting only 93 percent okay of the total geographical area this is because the land use uh, reporting for most of the northeastern states except Assam has not been done fully Okay, land use reporting for most of the northeastern states except Assam has not been done fully. Another point is that moreover, some areas of Jammu and Kashmir occupied by Pakistan and China have also not been surveyed. So some areas have been occupied by uh, Pakistan, some areas of Jammu and Kashmir occupied by China. Okay and these uh, occupied areas okay have also not been uh, surveyed uh, properly and that is why we have only 93 percent of the total geographical area for use 
then the lane under permanent pasture has also uh, decreased as you observe the pie diagram okay you will find that permanent pastures permanent uh, grazing land has also decreased then another one is that most of the other then fellow lane are either poor quality of or the cost of cultivation of such land is very high say for the uh, other than current fellow lands other than current fellow lands the quality of land is poor or the cost of cultivation in this area is very high and hence these lands are cultivated once or twice in about two to three years and if these are included in the natural area then the percentage of natural area in India comes to about 54 percent of the total reporting area that means if you add okay uh, this fellow lens if you add fellow lens to the natural area then it will be 54 percent natural area will be see here natural area is 45.5 percent and if you add uh, this uh, current fellow and the fellow land say for example these two okay these two then it will be about 54 percent okay 45.5 plus 4.9 plus 3.6 so it will come to uh, 54 percent the pattern of natural area varies greatly from one state to another okay the area this the natural area varies from state to uh, one state to another state it is over 80 percent in of the total area in Punjab and Haryana and less than 10 percent in Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Manipur and Andaman Nicobar Island so in Punjab and Haryana area the natural area occupies 80 percent more than 80 percent however in the northern state like Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Mizoram and islands like Andaman Nicobar uh, natural area occupies only 10 percent or less than 10 percent because most of these states are uh, or the Union Territory are occupied by hills and other barren lands okay then forest area in the country is far lower than the the desired 33 percent of the geographical area so this is the scientific norm okay as uh, outlined in the national forest policy 1952 the forest should occupy okay forest should occupy at least 33 percent of the total geographical area of the country so this is the scientific norm but as we observe okay it is far less than the scientific norm see here in this case when we look at this pie diagram see here forest covers only 23.3 percent in the year 2014 and 15 so this is far below 33 percent okay so we uh, have a target to reach uh, this 33 percent because uh, it is considered essential for the maintenance of ecological balance and uh, the livelihood of millions of people who live on the fringes of this forest depends on it so people who settle nearby the village depend on the forest for their sustenance okay and after that we have uh, this land degradation and the conservation measures uh, we shall learn what are the causes of land degradation and what are the different steps for conserving uh, the lane okay so anybody who can tell me what do you mean by land degradation anybody what do you mean by land degradation you know land degradation means uh, decrease uh, in the quality of land okay decline in the quality of land is known as land degradation 
so it may be because of uh, these uh, natural forces or it may be caused by the uh, human activities also so let us read so we shared we have shared our land uh, with the past generations and we'll have to do so with the future generations too so we have been using uh, the land and uh, we'll have to do so in the future also okay so 95 percent of our basic needs for food shelter and clothing are obtained for land from land 95 percent of basic needs of human being like food shelter and clothing are obtained for land so it tells the importance of land to us so human activities have not only brought about degradation of land but also have aggravated the pass of natural forces to cause damage to land. Aggravated means have accelerated uh, the speed of destruction of the land. So as I told you, degradation of land can be caused by natural forces as well as by, by the human activities. Some of the human activities uh, such as deforestation, over grazing, mining and quarrying to have contributed significantly in land degradation. I think deforestation you have learned. So cutting off trees on large scale. Over grazing, you know, each grassland has a carrying capacity and if you graze your animals more than the carrying capacity then the whole grassland will be uh, consumed Okay, in a, a particular period of time then that is called overgrazing and mining and coring you know mining means uh, the process of extracting minerals from the surface or from the subsurface and likewise we have quarrying quarrying means process of extracting stones uh, from the surface and the subsurface now let us uh, learn how uh, these human activities cause degradation of land so the first one is uh, mining sites Mining sites are abandoned after the excavation work is complete, leaving deep scars and traces of overburdening. Okay, see in the mining site, see here. Uh, let us say this is the surface. And uh, if we are doing uh, open ca uh, cast mining, surface mining, say for example we have some uh, minerals and uh, after removing the mineral the surface will be, will have, uh, okay, will have a big scar. There will be a big depression here. So in this way the lane is degraded or sometimes uh, uh, there we may find uh, this mineral deep in the earth interior. For example this is a seam of coal. So after taking out uh, this coal from here, okay, using sharp tunnels, then if we don't support it properly, and uh, after uh, after we have uh, left this mining area, then sometimes the roof will be collapsed. Okay, this section may be collapsed since uh, it uh, becomes a hole, it becomes a cap. Thus. Uh, thus making the lane unusable okay then another one in states like Jharkhand, Satisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Orisha deforestation due to mining have caused severe land degradation so in this state like Jharkhand, Satisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Orisha uh, because of mining deforestation is done and thus causing severe land degradation Likewise, in the states like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and the Maharashtra, overgrazing is one of the main reasons for land degradation. And in the states of Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh, over irrigation is responsible for land degradation due to water logging, leading to increase in salinity and alkalinity in the soil. So, in the over uh, irrigated area, for example, what is going on in Punjab, Haryana is that they have uh, this canal irrigation system. For example, this is the canal, okay, and here most of the canals are, are unlined, and that is why you see here, 
this is the agricultural field here so water uh, cps will be there there will be infiltration of water and it will be uh, flowing like this and uh, see here these are the soil particles found in the soil and when the water comes up on the surface due to capillary action then these soil particles will be dissolved and will carry upwards and uh, due to the su bright sunshine uh, the water will be evaporated thus leaving the salt on the surface of the agricultural field so in this way the agricultural land becomes a saline okay uh, this is happening in uh, Punjab and the Haryana Western Uttar Pradesh area then the mineral processing like grinding of limestone uh, for cement industry then calcite and the soft stones for ceramic industry generate huge quantity of dust in the atmosphere and it retards the process of filtration of water into the soil after it settles down on the land see in these uh, areas for example in the areas where there is cement industry for example uh, here this is the cement industry this is the cement industry so in this area so so many dust okay because of crushing activity so so many dust will be injected into the atmosphere and it will be settled on the agricultural land or on the land and just covering a thick layer of these limestone and others minerals and thus it prevents the infiltration of water into the uh, soil okay Another in recent years, industrial affluence as was uh, have become major source of land and the water pollution may be part of the country. You know, industries also releases a huge quantity of toxic waste materials into the agricultural land and uh, into the uh, land on any land surface, thus causing uh, this uh, land degradation. So after that, we have the steps for uh, solving the problems of land degradation that is the conservation measures okay so what are the uh, different measures for conserving the land resources are given here in this paragraph so the first one is appreciation and a proper management of grazing so this is the first step uh, which can conserve the land I think appreciation you have learned so this is the plantation of trees on large scale and proper management of grazing means uh, control grazing you know so it can be done in this way for example this is the uh, grazing land for example this is the grazing land what we can we do is that we can do a uh, barbed wire fencing here so first the first section we can do barbed wire fencing here and we can graze our animals here for the first week so after after this section has been consumed then again uh, we can do another uh, this uh, fencing here and uh, after the first week then uh, our animals can be grazed here then uh, that then the next section so in this way we can do control grazing okay this is what we call control grazing uh, we can do it by doing fencing uh, in the grasslands Plantation, uh, planting of shelter belts of plant, then control over grazing as discussed earlier, stabilization of sand dunes uh, by growing thorny bushes are some of the methods to sack the land degradation in the arid areas. Plantation of shelter belts, you know, these are mainly done in the desert areas. So we have to grow trees, okay, in rows, for example. So we have to grow trees uh, here in rows. So if we do like this, when the wind blows, uh, over the desert surface then these uh, row of trees okay uh, will decrease the speed of the wind thus preventing the soil erosion in the desert areas okay this is known as uh, shelter belts and likewise sand dunes heaps of sand in deserts okay these are moving because of the uh, these uh, desert winds and the movement of sand dunes can be sacked by growing thorny bushes or in the desert areas then proper management of wastelands 
and then control of mining activities okay uh, actually the government must regulate the mining activities then proper discharge and a disposal of industrial effluents and wash after treatment so all the toxic materials then industrial effluents may be solid or liquid must be treated uh, before uh, disposing on the land surface only after that the degradation of land can be a uh, check okay so any question boys and girls no sir okay then uh, for today uh, let us stop here thank you very much for joining my class and don't forget to send your names in the whatsapp group for attendance Thank you very much.